Hey everybody, my name is Pentahybrid and this is Listitis Video Games. On today's episode we are going to be counting down my top 10 Sonic the Hedgehog levels. This is not restricted to 2D or 3D era, this is all time. Let's get into it. Number 10, Oil Ocean from Sonic 2. Oil Ocean is a very memorable level for Sonic players. First and foremost, the level is a bit later in the game, so when this came out and people didn't have cheat sheets or the internet, it was a hard area to get to without skill and practice. But boy, when you got there and that color palette and level music erupted onto your little 17-inch Zenith or RCA television, it was truly an alien vision compared to the earlier stages. Second, the challenge. This level was one of the more difficult, as it was littered with spikes, clever badniks, and the ever-present fear of falling under the oil. And finally, the boss. As an entry on my Sonic Bosses list, you can tell I like it. The Sub-Eggman was a great end to the level and challenging for the player. Number 9, Ice Cap Zone from Sonic 3. Ice Cap Zone is widely regarded as the best level in Sonic 3, and I will say right now that I agree. So don't expect Angel Island or Carnival Zone on this list. A big reason it has the reputation is the music for the level. While a great tune to play to, it isn't one of my personal favorites, but this list has nothing to do with the music. This is all about the level. Fun fact though, the song was composed by Michael Jackson. When you finish Carnival Zone and climb into the cannon for the first time, you have little to no idea what is coming next. But I doubt that snowboarding was even close to the top of your list of guesses. Yep, it opens with one of the best introductions to a new zone I've seen yet. Snowboarding down a hill. This was later redone in City Escape, but the level seems to do it so much less than this one did. Atmosphere and Challenges gets Ice Cap Zone the number 9 spot. Number 8, Metropolis Zone from Sonic 2. Metropolis Zone is equal parts fun, long, and hard as balls. Steel balls. And I love challenge, so imagine me getting to this treacherous zone at the wee age of maybe four or five. Yeah, I was crying a few times. Damn those crabs. But what makes Metropolis Zone one of the most mentioned of Sonic levels and get a spot on my list? Clever design, challenge, and the fact that you've been trained to beat two acts, not three. Yes. This zone has three equally difficult and lengthy acts to spill through. Hard to master and memorize, especially due to some of the most sinister bad guy placements there have ever been in a game. And should I even mention the cloning Eggman at the end? No. I think we've all been there one too many times already. Number 7, Metal Harbor from Sonic Adventure 2 Battle. Metal Harbor. The first 3D era level to appear on this list. Not many of the 3D era levels had the same impact on me as the earlier Genesis titles did, but Metal Harbor was one of the few that did. This level was so fun to play through. Hard to spot secrets, precise timing, and an ending sequence that I adore to this day. This was also one of the very few levels in Adventure 2 Battle where you played as Sonic that I enjoyed. You could either blaze through it at 762 miles per hour, or take it slow and look around. It offered different approaches that I enjoyed many times. Also, it had one of my favorite Lost Chow emblems. Number 6, Marble Zone from Sonic 1. Marble Zone is known by many people. The thing is, though, that most people only know it for its wonderful level music. Understandable, game music rocks, and Sonic is among the best of them. But knowing a level for the music is only half of the joy. Playing through this pain in the ass level is the rest of it. It isn't so much difficult as it is just a big challenge for only being the second zone in Sonic 1. More so considering how easy the third zone is afterwards. Now the Flame Eggman at the end is pretty easy once you have played it for years, but that's not how I decide my entries on my lists. I consider them based off of when I first played them. Obviously this zone is easy now when I pop it in, but back when I first played it? Different story my friends. Number 5, Meteor Herd from Sonic Adventure 2 Battle. Meteor Herd is my second favorite Knuckles level in Sonic Adventure 2 Battle, and my second favorite level from the 3D era of Sonic. The area you had to explore was massive, and if you think just gliding as Knuckles is fun, try flying around in space as Knuckles. 
amongst the incorrectly named asteroids, you get to fly around doing your missions in one of the most atmospheric Sonic levels I've seen to date. Did you really think that this one would be left out? Number 4, Green Hill Zone from Sonic 1. When Sonic the Hedgehog first hit the shelves 8,345 days ago, from this recording, this was the first level anybody saw. And from that day forth has been one of the most memorable to any Sonic fan. Green Hill Zone is simply fantastic. It was colorful and friendly, and a great introduction to a game that many consider challenging. And remember back in the day, before we had save files, memory cards, or any type of ability to record game progress, you would restart the game when you lost. So you would have seen these three acts quite a bit. I did, and I enjoyed most of it. I can't say all, because no matter how memorable, fun, or warm the levels are, no one likes losing. It hurts it didn't make it higher on the list, but this took me a while to whittle down to just ten anyway. Number 3, Casino Night Zone, Sonic 2. Casino Night Zone. Casino Night Zone. I know for damn sure that I'm not the only person who, not during a speedrun of course, spent many minutes in this level jumping up into the slot machines hoping to get the jackpot. This level also made the two-player mode in Sonic 2 terrifically enjoyable. Trying to outscore your friends was even more fun with the slot machines and the bumpers. And then there is always Catcher Eggman, who also made it onto my top 10 Sonic bosses list. The fight can be really easy or moderately difficult depending on your skill. But remember, we are looking at these from before everyone knew the ins and outs of every game ever. Number 2, Sandopolis from Sonic & Knuckles. Sandopolis Zone is easily my favorite of the 2D era Sonic levels. The style that they presented it in was stunning. The brutal challenge it presented and the seemingly endless length of it. Many Sonic fans like me often refer to Sandopolis as Sonic and Knuckles' version of Metropolis Zone. This is very accurate, the only difference being that Sandopolis was presented in a much more creepy manner. The badniks are all ghost or desert based enemies. And then we get to another boss that appeared on my boss countdown. The original Egg Golem. A very simple fight, but sometimes simplicity is for the better. And number one, Pumpkin Hill from Sonic Adventure 2 Battle. There isn't much I can say about Pumpkin Hill aside from it is my favorite Sonic level. I don't know if it's the haunting atmosphere, or the clever secrets hidden around, or even just the Halloween-inspired backdrop and design. There are so many things about it that make it great, even if we are taking away the level music. Watch my 3D Sonic songs to see where it placed. Another pretty big factor about it was the amount of skeleton dogs that you could find in the level. I know, the Chow Garden shouldn't be a factor, it should be its own game. But still, Everyone has come to Pumpkin Hill for skeleton dogs after accidentally giving your favorite karate champion Chow an animal part they didn't want. <laughs> 